One of the most important concepts in the intensive care unit is correctly identifying and treating shock. Shock is the impaired perfusion of important organs. Organs get their perfusion from the heart via the circulatory system. The most important components of the system are adequate fluid in the tank or preload, adequate contractility or squeeze of the heart, and adequate vascular tone in the arterial system. When the body's important organs are poorly perfused, there are certain physical and biochemical signs. Impaired kidney perfusion leads to decreased urine output. Impaired brain perfusion leads to altered mental status. Muscle and liver ischemia can cause increased levels of lactic acid in the body. In fact, the surviving sepsis guidelines define several criteria for the severity of organ impairment. I'll point out these include absent bowel sounds, and thrombocytopenia, or other signs of peripheral organ impairment. There are several categories of shock. There's hypovolemic, cardiogenic or cardioobstructive, and distributive shocks. In hypovolemic shock, there is insufficient fluid in the vessels and insufficient cardiac preload to maintain a good cardiac output. In cardiogenic shock, there's insufficient contractility, and in distributive shock, there's too much vasodilation. It's important to identify the category of shock because each category corresponds to an appropriate treatment. For hypovolemic shock, you fluid resuscitate. For cardiogenic shock, <clears throat> you provide medications to increase cardiac contractility. In distributive shock, you provide medications to increase vascular tone. Importantly, Patients don't fall into one category or another exclusively, and patients can have multiple types of shock going on at the same time. When treating patients in a state of shock, the clinician is often forced to decide if the patient would be fluid responsive. By fluid responsive, we mean will giving the patient more intravenous fluids increase cardiac output, and about 50% of patients will and 50% of patients will not be volume responsive. A landmark study of 1,000 patients showed that conservative fluid management decreased length of stay and time on the ventilator in the ICU without increasing other organ-related morbidity or mortality, but did not show a change in overall mortality. We can describe the relationship between volume status or preload and cardiac output or stroke volume using a frank startling curve. If a patient is low on the curve, you can conceptualize their heart as half full. If you volume resuscitate them initially, you can improve cardiac output. At this point on the frank startling curve, the patient is no longer volume responsive, and another fluid bolus no longer improves cardiac output. At this point, if the patient is still in shock, we will need other means of support, like pressors or inotropes, to increase cardiac output. In summary, Shock is a low perfusion state characterized by altered mental status, decreased urine output, increased lactic acid, and several other clinical signs. Patients can be in shock from hypovolemia, decreased cardiac output, or vasodilation, and identifying the appropriate cause will help guide the appropriate treatment. A liberal fluid strategy leads to increased time on the ventilator and increased ICU stay, so it is important to identify the patients that are fluid responsive, which means the patients for whom cardiac output will increase with fluid resuscitation.